Hello, everyone. Welcome to this week's Market Wrap. So I'm back in Philly. I spent the whole weekend in Philly working and having our sales Christmas party. I can't believe Christmas is almost here, and I can't wait for my boys to come home this weekend. It's going to be great having them home for Christmas break. My Giants are just awful, but at least Max's high school basketball season starts Saturday night. So three watches we love this week, and the first one's a Panerai. It's a Radio Mir Turbion GMT ceramic case, just an awesome skeleton turbion. It was a huge retail when it was brand new, now trades on the secondary market. It's a great value. Love this piece, very rare, very special piece. And the second piece is an Audemars Piquet, and it's a Jules Audemars, the 260030R. Now, I happen to love Jules Audemars. It's a classic perpetual calendar equation of time, a very specific Audemars complication. I think it's a beautiful watch, rose gold black dial. I love the sunrise sunset. It's set to the city you live in. Just an amazing rare piece, really underappreciated in today's market. And the last piece, but certainly not the least, is a Rolex. And this one's the 128238 with a very special malachite diamond dial. It's absolutely incredible. In person, just pops. I love the classic Rolex 36 millimeters. I love stone dials. And this malachite one might just be the best. Now, we spent the weekend following the Phillips sale in New York, and it was all about Patek Philippe. Now, the Tiffany dial 5711-1A, I'm sure you've seen it all over the internet, brought over $6 million for charity. And the Nautilus prices went through the roof, basically trading double overnight. Now, Nautilus have been creeping up over the last year, but I don't think this jump is healthy for the market that, in my opinion, was already overheated. And I do not believe these prices will hold at this level. I think it was just the hype of the market. Everybody got a little overexcited. I think we'll see paddocks come back to normal. Now, granted, Nautiluses are still great pieces, but I really believe this was an anomaly in the market. Now, this morning, Paddock brought themselves back into the spotlight again. Here it is, the introduction of the 5750, the latest in the series of advanced research watches. Now, I've loved the advanced research project. It started in 2005, created some great products, and now the new piece really raises the bar with a minute repeater, a crystal resonator, really improved sound, just a very cool design. Now, the only thing not to love about this piece is they are only making 15 pieces. So this really will very quickly become another million dollar paddock. So now we're running right into Christmas. I thought it'd be fun to chat about some of our favorite watches we would love to get for Christmas and also some we might love to give for Christmas. So I invited Layla, who has much more fashion sense than me, and we will also take on some viewer questions, which I love to do, and maybe give some of our insights into the market. So Layla, thanks for joining us again on Market Wrap. Thank you for having me, as always. It's always fun to have you. And <laughs> being so close to Christmas, I thought it would be a great time Time to take a look at maybe some of the things we'd like to give for Christmas. Maybe that's some of the things we'd like to get for Christmas. And I figure you certainly have a little more fashion sense than I do. So you'd be the perfect person to drag into this. All right. Fair enough. <laughs> you reeled me in on this one. I reeled you in on this one. So <laughs> I started picking in the vault this morning and found myself going towards a number of gold Rolexes. I know you're mm -hmm. a big fan of gold Rolexes. Tell me what you think about Rolex in general. Uh, everybody knows I'm the Rolex chick here at Watchbox, so I can't get enough of Rolex. Um, I think a gold Daytona is perfect for both a man and a woman. It's a great unisex piece, but I really love to see them as a gift for a woman because um, it's a 40 that definitely wears like a 36. It's true. I think yeah. I love that. I know I picked out one with a black dial. I like the blue dial Daytonas. I like all the Daytonas. And actually, I do love them on women. Yeah. Um, I think it's a very cool, very chic watch for a lady. I love them for quite some time. Uh, black dial, gold, yellow gold Daytona was definitely my grail watch. Um, I would still take that in a second. I've just recently moved into the day dates, but uh, <laughs> would totally love that watch. Definitely up there on a wish list for sure. Well, speaking of day dates, I pulled out one. I know you love the 36s. Mm -hmm. We have a blue Arabic that, again, I almost never see. I love odd dials in Rolexes. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's no other way to say it because to me, most Rolexes are very similar. Uh, what really makes a Rolex special is the dial. Yes. Yeah, without a doubt. That one you just showed me um, is uh, 
you have to see it in person or at least kind of shift it in a different light to see really how gorgeous that dial is. Yeah, it's a real it's deep beautiful. blue. It's an unusual yes. blue for Rolex. I think that's a great piece. Again, um, I would love to see that on a woman. I think that would be a great piece. But we do have a lot of guys who still wear the 36s. It's a great size for a man and a woman, but at the same time, more and more women are even shifting into larger dials. So a 36 is kind of, I mean, even for me, it's kind of right there. I don't want to go any smaller, smaller pretty much. Um, but the uh, Malachite dial that we just got in that you mentioned uh, is gorgeous. It is absolutely incredible. Yes. Again, I saw it for the first time in person. It's one of those pieces that it's such an unusual dial Rolex that I had never even seen it in person mm -hmm. because when they did the introduction, you know, we were doing them all remote. So in pictures, it looks nice. Yeah. But when you see that in person, it might be one of the best stone dials I've ever seen. Really? Yeah. It's just a gleaming green. It's a gleaming green. Yeah, yes. I know that. everything's cool and green this year and there's been a year yeah, of green, but this that's one's a, a little special bit different. One. It is very different. It yeah. doesn't feel trendy green. Yeah, I love that watch. Whoever gets that one is going to be a very lucky, very lucky lady or, or gentleman. 100%. It's a beautiful watch. And the other one I pulled out, I found odd because uh, typically I don't like brown dials in general. I don't like Jubilee bracelets. So this has everything I'm not supposed to like, <laughs> but this kind of vintage GMT in gold with that brown bezel and dial really works for me. Somehow. Yeah, I like, I like it too. And I, you know, I hate Jubilee on, on sports models, but I mean, it, it works with a precious metal. Yeah, uh, I think it's very different in a precious yeah. metal than it is in steel. Cause I feel the same way. I'm not a steel Jubilee guy, Yeah. but that gold Jubilee, something about it just softens it somehow. Yeah, without a doubt. I think um, that, that's a beautiful watch. It's also, a, it's really, really clean piece that we happen to have in so it's yeah it's for its age gorgeous. it's immaculate yes yeah that one's gorgeous that and would be a beautiful gift yeah the last piece i picked was a 31 so probably too small for you yeah uh, a bit. but uh the dial <laughs> it's a stone just, dial it's a stone dial so maybe you'll <laughs> maybe you'd suffer through it yeah uh, i love yeah I, that's a gorgeous watch yeah but, that how light dial mm -hmm. a lot of people call it marble it's just like we had somebody who wanted the pictures of it and they're like oh is the crystal cracked and we're like uh, no that's just yeah. kind of the dial mm -hmm. But again, very rare <laughs> dial, very unusual. I kind of love stone dial Rolexes. Yeah, I can't get enough of those. I mean, we have some really great ones in our inventory right now. And I think long term, they're going to shoot up. I mean, we've seen them. We've already seen them go up. We've seen them go up for yeah. sure. Mm -hmm. Gold in general, stone dials for sure. But I think they've got another runway to go. Yeah, they're just they're just starting to get to their peak now, I think. All right. Yeah. Well, that kind of covers our Rolex. Actually, we did have that one other um, OP the 36, the previous generation OP. Yes. With purple, which I kind of thought was cool. Yeah, it's. I mean, it's. it has a cooler look to it uh, all around stainless with a darker dial. Um, Not a purple I, girl. No, I mean, I guess, <laughs> again, it's, it's a very unisex piece. Um, I think it has a great price point. Yeah, um, no, it's a great value today's yes. world. Uh, and everybody loves to get their hands on a, you know, a discontinued model, so. It's, it's a great piece. All right. Yeah. We'll still keep that one in the yeah. mix. <laughs> All right. What else is on our wish list here? Honestly, an Omega Speedmaster. Because to me... Quintessential. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Like almost nothing more classic. I think an amazing value in this market. And almost everyone, kind of like a steel sub, it's a watch that should be in everyone's collection. Yes, I can agree with you. That's a perfect watch to equate it to from another brand is the steel sub. Yeah, yeah, it's just a classic. It's iconic. You'd never go wrong with that. I love that watch in a yeah. collection. Mm -hmm. um, I also pulled out an Oris just because in a price point, I don't know there's a better brand out there. I agree with you. It's a very well-made watch. Um, they have some pretty cool dials too. Uh, the green ones right now that are, you know, that's that why I pulled out with yep, the green only because it's to get their the hands green on. Here. Yes. Yes. Uh, Oris is a fabulous watch. Fantastic price point. I'm really into Tudors at their price point as well. Um, and I think there's some really cool ones out there too. Everybody's loving all the black bays um, and not necessarily on the bracelets, but I kind of like them on the straps. I love those vintage mm -hmm. straps that they use. Yeah, I like that. I like that. Yeah. And again, to your point in the, you know, three to $4,000 range, it's a great watch. Yeah, yeah I love the Tudors. Like the red, love the blue, love all the variations. And I've seen people collect them uh, even the bronze one, I kind of got over bronze, but I still yeah. go back to it every yeah. once in a while. I'm seeing more and more people even trade their Rolex in for Tudors. They want a different look. Really? Yep. Interesting. Yeah. So that's kind of cool to see. Oh, I would love to people see People just want to switch it up these days. I love that. So that's fun. Yeah, Tudors is a great one. And then if we want to, you know, 
go up there for something a little more fancy or high priced, uh, Longa. Longa is a classic. Mm -hmm. I mean, I love the Longa ones. They've gotten a lot more attention over the last couple of years. I brought out one of the original Longa ones in rose gold. Yeah. We have the Grand with the black dial. I love those pieces. Yeah, I love those pieces. Everybody's trying to get their hands on them. I think it was, you know, everybody wants Jorn, definitely Jorn. Um, but more and more people are gravitating towards Longa. They really find it interesting. And I think it's a great piece to get into right now because they're that. shooting up in price. All right, what else do you love in ladies' pieces? Uh, I'm starting to get into Cartier. Interesting. There's some cool, there's some cool pieces, yeah. I love some of the early Cartier straps watches. Mm -hmm. I pulled out one of the platinum uh, case pieces. Just, they have that really cool vintage look. Again, very chic, stylish. I think if you are dressing up, you know, the cool big Rolexes are great. But yes. like, when I see a small Cartier strap watch, I think they're kind of awesome. It, I mean, Lady Diana wore them back in the day. It will always be a classic piece. Uh, you can't go wrong with that watch. Yeah, yeah. no, I think that classic tank will yeah. always be in fashion. Mm -hmm. And I definitely am seeing more and more interest, especially in the early Cartiers. Yeah. I mean, I still have, uh, still have a lot to learn, I think, when it comes to the different uh, variations of Cartiers, uh, but I am, I am getting into them a bit more. And I actually like, I've never really been into the diamond pieces, but some of them are pretty cool. They are pretty cool. I mean, yeah. they got a little bit too much over the top, I think, for a few <laughs> yeah. years. I mean, it was a diamond too everything, iced out. too iced out. <laughs> but yeah, no, the classic, to me, the CPCPs and kind of the classic strap watches with diamonds, I think, work. Yeah, they're very cool. That would be a perfect gift uh, for the holidays. A little that. glitz. All right, a little yeah. bit of glitz, not mm -hmm. too much. Yeah. Or a gold Rolex, right? Or a gold Rolex, Either always. one would work for yeah. you. <laughs> Perfect. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. Oh, well, this was great. So we're going to also now, we got viewer questions. One of my favorite things to take, uh, I get a lot of viewer questions come in. We don't always get a chance to hit them, but okay. we had some good ones come in this week. So I figured we'd do them together. All right, let's go. Let's what do we got? So the first one comes into this weekend's Phillips auction, brought in some crazy results. Do you foresee any slowdown in pricing? Seeing a blue dial 5711 sell for excess of 275K seems ridiculous. Do you think these values will hold true and have any impact on the secondary market at large? Well, I mean, uh, the auction was very exciting. We could start there. Right. However. Tiffany Blue was very cool, $6 yeah. million. Dollars. Yeah, I mean, the, as cool as that is, I think it's, it's quite absurd. <laughs> I mean, we really thought maybe it'll go to two or three million. Six it's a big number. was insane. Um, and that's great, but it's for charity and everything. I just, uh, uh, 175 pieces or 170? 170 pieces, yeah. Yeah, I just, uh, that's just way too much. Um, I know, we know that the market will shoot up all around from that for, for a yeah, little while. Yeah, it did. But we did see the yes. next three Nautiluses basically yeah. double from yes. what they were doing Two days before. All overnight, yeah. Um, I mean, what I think is going to happen is that a lot of these dealers are going to end up overpaying for these watches. They're going to sit in their vault or back room for quite some time. And, and I don't know if they'll actually sell for close to what they, you know, bought them at. And I think that, uh, you know, list is one thing. What, they, what pieces actually sell for is another. I don't know how long this will last. Um, but... It, it'll be interesting to see. I just know that watch dealers, we both know, hate to admit when they, <laughs> they, wrong, they, wrong. they yeah, overpay no, I don't for think, watch. I mean, again, I was getting nervous <laughs> at the Nautilus market in the low hundreds. So yeah. At 275, I'm certainly out. Um, I don't, I think it's an anomaly. I think everybody got caught up in the hype, got yeah. caught up in the excitement of the auction. I can't imagine these prices are going to hold at that level. I think it's a one of event and I think it'll come back to more normal certainly in the next couple of weeks. Well, I'll tell you, I uh, have been offered the the uh, 36 millimeter Rolex, you know, Tiffany dial OP. Right. Last week, paying one number, people coming back to me now saying, well, you saw the, the Tiffany <laughs> go, and that now, now I should be doubling Shifting my, the my price on a Rolex OP. Um, yeah. Not so much, not I don't so think. Much. Well, I still love that watch, but yeah. no, not, not double. For yeah. Sure. <laughs> All right, so our second question is, what timepiece do you think are primed for an increase in value in the new year? 
So I'll give you my thoughts on this one since you went first the last time. All right, go ahead. So today, interestingly enough, we had the drop of the Paddock Advanced Research. I love advanced researches. Mm -hmm. And outside of the Aquanaut, um, the 5650, which has gone crazy, the early advanced researches are very attainable and viable at what I think are very reasonable levels. And I think with this new interest, with this new excitement, 15 pieces, I think it's going to lift all of those early references up. Yeah, I agree. I can agree with you. I mean, people, the Minute Repeater is a a phenomenal watch. Phenomenal. Um, And if it's loud, as they say, I'd love to hear it. Um, It's a great complication. Yeah. But I think it can spread through the rest of the cut collection. Yeah. I mean, there's one of 15. It's going to be basically impossible for anybody to get their hands on them. It's an instant million dollar pack. Yes. And that's going to drive up prices on all of the others. I can see that. I I can agree with you on that. Yep. All right. All right. What's your pick? Where do you see? I I still think that all these precious metal models are going up. They were soft for so long. And and, uh, we're we're seeing, you know, a couple weeks ago when we talked about even white gold pieces. Right. They're all on their way up now. I would agree with you there. I think there's definitely some more runway to go. We've seen um, the green dial rose gold pieces shoot up. We've seen the John Mayer Daytona shoot up. Yeah. I think it will carry out through the rest of the collection. Yeah, I'm, ex- I'm excited to see where they go. I think it's, I will continue to come here and say that it is a perfect watch to get into now. And it, soon I will be wrong because they will just be very high. Um, <laughs> so. <laughs> We'll see how long that takes. Yes, exactly. My last piece, I think that'll do well, and I've been talking about this for a year, and it started to happen, was uh, the Vacheron Sport models. Oh, yes. I mean, we've definitely seen an increase. We're seeing the 5500s go up. Mm -hmm. Um, Certainly nowhere near Nautilus numbers. Um, But getting to be closer to half of them, where they were a third six months ago. It's very interesting to see. Yeah, I think. And to me, they're rarer. They're cool. I like the interchangeability. I think we're going to still see that. Uh, especially on the gold pieces. And I hope I'm right, because we just put one in inventory yesterday at a <laughs> high number. Fingers <laughs> crossed. Fingers crossed. <laughs> I think there's still some place to go with Yeah, that. that's another watch that I see people trading out a Rolex for, or the overseas. Yes, mm-hmm. very they cool just, piece. Again, want something different. Yeah. I think that's the trend. Hopefully that's a trend for 2022, because I was getting sick of you know the same Nautilus, the same Rolex, the same watch that yeah. everybody was chasing. I hope we see more and more of this kind of diversion in the market. I, I hope so, too. I can agree All with right. you. Something to look forward to in 2022. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Speaking of that, hopefully we'll have you back at some point in 2022. Yeah, we have the 100th episode of Market Wrap coming up soon. We do Very have the 100th exciting. episode coming up. We'll make a good one for that. <laughs> so thanks again for joining us. Of course. Thank you for having All me. Right. Everybody have a great holiday. Happy holidays.